Okay, all in favor? Yeah. All right. All right. Anybody here for public comment or inquiry? No, not quite the one. No. Anything that's not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none, we'll move on. Jose's first appointment. You ready to go, Jose, or you want to wait another 15 minutes? <laughs> Sit around for 15. Can everybody get the handout? It should be a, an EV yep. pamphlet there. It's orange and black. Yep. Oh, let's see. If you're all set, Jose, we'll take you right up here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, well, uh, I got so much information that. You know, I don't even know how to start, but uh, I put a summary together as far as what's been done, and uh, that's basically the first thing you have in your package there, and uh, you know, the uh, all the steps that have been taken, and the uh, the grant, and uh, the out of pocket that the town would have to do for this level two versus level three, and all that. And it's, uh, it's, I don't know if you had a chance to read it or you want me to go over it. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the 2.2K uh, out of pocket, you wouldn't have to, most of it you wouldn't have to because we have money and all that. So basically, I just want to start with the Energy Committee. Uh, there's a lot of new faces in the Energy Committee. Uh, there's uh, several people that have stepped down. And uh, the, uh, you know, the new people are very data driven. And I liked them quite a bit because of that. They, they, you know, initially it was kind of like uh, not that data driven, but these people are. So the first thing they they did was okay, evaluate these uh, charging stations, and they did that, and they came up with numbers. And it's Jose, I'm really sorry to inform you, but 75% of users charge their home, charge their vehicles at home. 30% yeah. charges at work on the level two, because level twos are called destination charges. That's how they're called. Basically, you go to a hotel, you go skiing, whatever, spend a place that you're gonna spend a long time, and then those charges are, are nice, because they can charge, you can charge. And uh, to your question, 50 mile radius, how much they're charging? If you go to Killington, and you have an electric vehicle, you can charge for free. If you go to uh, Barner Inn, if you have an electric bill, if you stay there, you can charge for free. So there's a lot of establishment that do that. That is like an attract for to, to, just to attract customers. There are other ones too, though that charge. There's two main vendors, the EVGO, FGO, and ChargePoint. Uh, FGO charges one dollar fifty cents an hour, and ChargePoint charges two dollars an hour. Level two again, no level three. Level two, okay. Um, there's some of them uh, in downtown Burlington, you'll see them. It's downtown uh, Montpelier, you'll see them, those two types, okay. So then the committee said, okay, so where are we going to put it? Where are we going to put it in Bethel? Where, do we have a place in Bethel that people would come in and visit, like a ski resort or, I don't know, like uh, the law school or? Well, the only place that people would do that would be uh, in the workplaces, like a uh, school, uh, GW Plastics, etc. That, that would be the only place that makes sense for the 30% of the EV user that uses the level two charger outside of home, right? You guys follow me? So they said, okay, well, fine. Because right now, Bethel doesn't really have a, a nice, uh, how do I say this, uh, uh, touristic attraction. We just don't have it yet. We may get there eventually for another five, three or five years, but right now we don't. So people, when you come to Bethel, unless they come to work, there's five, three to 500 jobs here. You know, GW has 250, uh, Vermont Casting has 30 or 40, et cetera, et cetera. We have about 400 or so jobs that are definitely there. Most of these people commute. They would be candidates. And the nice thing about the electric charging stations is that they, they give the user, uh, potential EV user, a, a, a way, a justification for, for, for buying an electric vehicle because they, they are not gonna have this range, range anxiety that most those of these people have. So, 
uh, basically, unless we're going to have a transformation in Bethel that would have people coming over here and staying here somewhere, level two charges, where we're going to put them, right? That's a, that, 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 that is the dilemma we have here because we have a tight spot in the uh, downtown area. Uh, we would have to sacrifice two uh, parking spots. We would have to maintain light illumination. I couldn't find the illumination charges that you asked me to. How much? Is, I don't know if you were the one who did that, but you guys wanted to know how much. But I know from Teresa's data that we, uh, the town of Bethel, spends about eighteen thousand or so dollars a year for the lights because that's the only expense that you guys cannot deduct from the maple, uh, uh, green maple arrangements that you have on it. Okay, so, so most of the electricity in Bethel is taken care of with the solar uh, PPAs that you guys have taken into, into uh, you know, agreement with, but not the lights. We're still paying 18,000. So I took about myself to count the lights. There's about 100 of them. So, you know, if you go downtown, go all this, I brought to about 100. So these are about $180 a year per light, okay? So if you divide it up, it's about 50 cents a night per light. So every night, Bethel pays about $50 to light their streets, okay? So if we put an electric station, it requires light. So it's gonna require that expense, okay? And uh, because I ask, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the grand people, you know, so what people are doing, the charge, the Apex people, what do people are doing? They're putting it where there's a light already, they don't have to have that expense. Because nobody wants that expense. Right? Follow me so far. Right? So, I said, well, is there a way that we can have a, and another thing is the grid. Okay. The grid is it, a problem because that's why we're not pursuing level three because the uh, the demand and, and the uh, uh, the capacity of the grid is going to be maxed out with these things because even to this day we pay uh, surcharges. I don't know if you guys have seen that on your bills, but in GW we pay a lot. When there are basically when we're drawing power from peak uh, periods, we're going to pay a lot again. So we already have that. So imagine having level twos and level threes everywhere. There's going to be a point that it's going to be, the, the grid is not going to be able to take it. Especially if now with the solarizing effort, people are putting solar piles in there. In fact, we're involved on that. You know, that, that charges the grid. That charges the grid. So, and uh, with that, I have another quote from uh, uh, solving all those issues. So this, this quote that you guys, uh, Greg, I already put it in your, in your packages. It's, it's, it's a standalone, no permit. No, uh, no grid issues. It's, it's a generator in case there's a power outage. Uh, they're from California. You can take it off and store it away in the winter because it's not good for the winter. I forget, uh, you know, the, the worry about the grid and all of that. And it is a futuristic uh, design concept. And uh, but then again, where we're we going to put it? That is that, that that is the next, you know, <coughs> unless we have. A plan, and unfortunately, the planning commission took away our our, our, our planning uh, activity with the BRI. We're going to do uh, get together with the citizen and create what kind of town we're going to live in. You know, create parks, uh, modes of transportation, etc. You know, we would have maybe uh, proposed to buy property somewhere, maybe for more casting, big building abandoned there, maybe you know. We will require of dogs about a half a million dollars to buy half of the property, put parking lot, put trails. People will come, park their cars, walk around the trail in Bethel. It becomes like a like a touristic touristic attraction. Yeah, that kind of thing. But uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, bring it up where we are and, and open up for discussion if you have any questions. I you know I've been looking into it quite a bit. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's kind of like, for me anyways, there's like kind of two halves to it. Like the first half was, you know, we put together the energy committee to look at, you know, these types of activities, you know. Um, and the charging stations was one of them that we had talked about since the beginning. And it has been a plan that 
you know, we've had all along and, you know, have put a little bit of funding aside for it. Um, but just kind of looking into it right now, I mean, I still think it'd be a great thing for the town to have, but looking into <clears throat> some of the numbers now, so just numbers aside, you know, if you look at, you know, the initial investment really isn't too big. You know, there's $2,200 plus the lighting um, is your initial investment. But then you do have, if you break up your five years worth of fees, you know, you have about $2,000 a year worth of money that would go, you would have to pay for that charging station alone. Um, to, you know, keep the software up to date, keep the the warranty on it, um, yeah. you know, add another 180 on top of that for lighting, you know, things like that. So there's there's an investment there every year, which it sounds like from now that, you know, before we were talking, maybe we would recoup some of the money with some of the charge-offs, but if a lot of people in the area are doing it for free, how, why is someone going to want to pay two bucks an hour to charge this here? But the, now the, the most difficult one is now the state has planned in 2020 to put a rest area here off the exit on three where they plan on doing 22 charging stations. So it's kind of at this point, it's like, well, why do we have a charging station if they're going to have 22 of them right up the road? I don't, and I was trying to get some more data and I failed on, I was making calls today trying to get some data like, you know, with the charging stations, does the state plan on, is that free service will have like these pay pass things? How, how is that gonna look like? But I wasn't able to get any, enough information for the meeting, but, so I don't know if there'll be, my guess is it makes sense because, you know, people can park there and commute by bus yep. and they can have their vehicles plugged in for eight hours charging their vehicle, which a level two charger, you know, works for that. So. Uh, can I point something out? I, I got some numbers here, if you guys want to get into the chart thing, but the, the one thing that I didn't mention is that the 150 per hour or $2 per hour, after four hours, there is a significant surcharge because they want those guys out of it. Right. So if the, if the uh, stop area, if those guys don't disconnect, they're going to pay. So right. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know what it, what it looks like, well, what the kind of proposal thing. looks like. Yeah, I don't know how, how it's going to look or what, what the plan is for that. Other than I do know they're planning on 22, from what I saw, 22 Correct. charging stations and that. Yeah, and Tesla is free, you know, if you have Tesla. You know, right. but, but again, I don't know. Another thing is that if you have, one of the, one of the particulars about this electric vehicle, that's, what, that's why the project was born. Is because the grant and the comprehensive energy plan already identified transportation to be one of the biggest opportunities for fossil fuel reduction. You know? Because we're getting a lot of heat pumps, uh, people are getting more efficient, weatherization, all that. But as far as fossil fuel consumption, transportation is like the biggest, uh, you know, opportunity. So the electric vehicle is is the response to that. So. But it is not the panacea of all, because, because just because we're going to replace every commuting car, like it's not going to happen. It's right. not going to be the answer. It's going to be several, it's going to have uh, transportation. In fact, you know, walking could be, a, if you walk more, uh, a mile or, or less, walking is more efficient than driving a car. In the summer, most obviously, in the winter, obviously, you don't want to do that, but, you yeah. know, so, so, all of that, biking is more efficient if you go two miles, you know. Now, if you drive a truck for work because you're a farmer or something, that's crazy. You, 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 but if you're commuting, if you place it, you know, going to work, to, uh, like, you know, you're a school, whatever, then, you know, when I think about that, I, like I said, most of the jobs here are commuter people. And if you put electric chargers on that uh, stop over there, that uh, rest stop area, if you are a school uh, teacher or a GW employee or a broadcasting employee or a Bethel employee, you're not going to leave your car there to charge. You, you want something here that you can charge, you know. You, you, you need to, you know. So that's a... Uh, and, and the other thing is the, the idea of plugging your car at night is like... A, uh, earlier last year we had an event with, uh, you know, with a town. We brought some electric vehicles and, and they were saying, I don't understand why the people have this idea that, you know, because I spend less time 
renewing my car with energy than you because you got to stop at the gas pump. Every, all I got to do is light my phone, I plug my car, and I forget about it for a week. Yeah. So it's like, it, it is a mind shift that, it, that, that is going to become more and more uh, prevalent, you know, with, with the young generation and, and the people who are, and, and the transportation revolution, because they will be. And uh, that's why one, th that thing that I'm presenting to you, that, that's, uh, that is kind of like the future, because, you know, you're not going to be depending on your car for everything in the next five to ten years. Right now, we just can't think of being without a vehicle. But in the five, ten years from now, that's not going to be the case. In fact, we've seen that in European nations. You know, a lot of people in Europe, they just bite because they understood, okay, if I'm going more than uh, less than two miles, why am I going to drive? We just bite. It's a lot quicker, it's a cleaner, it's better for you. All of that. So that's. Uh, so I guess I'm just, you know, you know, my my thought at this point is, you know, do we, you know, do we move forward? Uh, you know, obviously one is to move forward with the plan, um, and then see how that works versus the other charging stations we have in the area. We do have to be, you know, cognizant that, you know, there's about $21, $2,200 a year in costs that we'll have to put into the budget yearly to maintain the facility. Um, you know, the other option is to wait for the state of Vermont to put theirs in and see how that may or may not affect our plan and maybe just delay our plan until after that's built. You know, then we can get maybe some more data off, off of that, you know. Um, I'd like to just make a counterpoint to something Jose said earlier that actually interplays with what you were saying a moment ago, which was, um, I, I recognize what you were saying about most most people in this area, this isn't a destination, but there are a significant number of people who come and then work in Bethel and are here for four to eight hours of the day. Yeah. And you know, our business is actually intending people to come and yeah. spend time in Bethel. And I think that's some of what we're trying to build in Bethel. And so just saying, that there's no one that needs a charging station here that's actually going to be here for a long, a longer extended period of time. I think that's actually not valid. The other, the counterpoint to that, so there's, you know, downtown, but then people who park at the White Church are taking a stagecoach and they're leaving their car for half a day or the full day. Um, you know, and I, I think your your idea of GW Plastics or even the school, those are, to me, those are also viable places where a significant number of people are going and then they're parked there for a period of time. Um, I guess I see I see this, and I, I hear what you're saying, Chris, of the, if the state puts something in down by the highway, but I still see Bethel as downtown Bethel, or even the greater downtown Bethel, <coughs> as having a potential clientele that isn't, their needs aren't met by being down by the highway. Their needs are met by being here in town. And I see this as an opportunity to either lead the way or not lead the way and sit back and wait for somebody else to lead the way and then kind of like catch up. Um, you know, and I, I fully recognize and I think it's important that we weigh the, you know, like you were saying, the extended costs, that it's, you know, about 2000 a year out of the town's pocket, but is, is the greater benefit of being on the forefront of these things that our, our state is saying, our state is mandating a push for these sorts of things and to be able to highlight those as here's, here's one more way that Bethel's pushing towards the future. I mean, I think it's it's a bigger benefit than just what the cost is, I guess, is where I'm going with this. And I think there are larger clientels than just commuters. I think there are people who physically work here or even live here that might, might very much be interested and might invest in electric vehicles if they had an option. How many people making 10 to $12 an hour are going to be able to afford it? You know, that's... That, People in here aren't making thirty, forty dollars an hour, and to be able to drive one of these, it's the average working person is gonna, you know, they don't have the extra money for that. Um, uh, I just want to add one two uh, points. Um, I agree, they're expensive. However, there's a lot of incentives that bring the cost down very competitive to to a regular car. But that's, that's you know, in other words, tax rebates, etc. You know, somebody's gonna pay for that. You know, 
much for you, Mr. Lord. I hear you. Well, the tough, you know, the tough position that we're we're put in right now is, I mean, you know, we're we're trying to seek out alternatives, you know, but it comes with a cost, you know, and in certain areas can absorb costs better than others, you know. So I guess we just have to play that trade off of moving forward and not moving forward and saving cost, you know, and, and what's that trade off for our town? Um, yeah. Is there any data available on how many vehicles are in town that are electric vehicles? Uh, uh, Little the 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 right now we has one vehicle that commutes from Norwich and charges on this workplace, but uh, I don't think there's anybody uh, right now. And uh, putting a charging station downtown, to your point, would lead the way, but we would occupy two spaces, and uh, are we ready for that? Are we ready to just charge forward and say, you know what, this is the future, and uh, these are two spaces that we're gonna dedicate, and to your point, uh, if we put those, let, let's say we, let's play this scenario, let's put two spots, let's say the charge of, of vehicles is, is, I hear what you're saying, Mom. somebody's gonna pay for it, but just hear me out. Let's put two spots, and we start charging $2 every hour, okay? That's basically the going charge. Um, if a car, you know, if, if an electric vehicle parks there for four hours, we're gonna get, after the 10% fee, that's another thing, uh, Theresa asked, credit card. What happens with if a person comes with a credit card? Well, it's all taken care of because the charge, uh, Point company charges a 10% fee for the transactions. So the town of Bethel gets 90% of whatever the money is, okay? But if we get $2, uh, if we charge $2, we pay 15 cents per kilowatt, and we pay uh, 20, uh, 20 cents fee because it's 10%, and uh, that'll give us, uh, for four hours, $1,500 a year, okay? And uh, five years will be 7,920, which will recover most of the uh, $5,000 warranty and $5,000 <laughs> of communication. That was another question. Okay. Just for four hours a day, five days a week. We're not talking seven days. We're talking four hours. We'll recover $8,000, okay? If we were to lead the way like that, okay? For so many hours a week? For five days a week, Times 20 hours, hours a week. All right. I got the numbers here. You gotta see it. Okay. So, but I think when we, you know, moving forward with this proposal, I, mean, I think we, you know, I think we have to balance it between costs of the town that we know, because there is no guaranteed revenue, right? I mean, the revenue isn't guaranteed. It could, we could put it in and it could never be used. Or Correct. we could put it in and it could be the hottest spot in town and everybody uses it. So but I think, like, to make your decision as a board, you know, there, there is no anticipated revenue, you know, other, or no guaranteed revenue. No guaranteed. What there is is there's guaranteed costs. And I think we just have to, you know, if we decide as a board to move forward with this, then we're just assuming that, you know, we're gonna, we have the upfront costs with the, the grants. Right. And, um, and, and then yearly, we're gonna have to put in our budget $2,000. Now, maybe that ends up being nothing, you know, or maybe it ends up being 2,000, but I think we have to base our decision on that, when, you know, with the hopes that people are gonna use it when they do come. And then hopefully those. One, one thing I wanted to point out is that the first five years, no cost. No cost. If you put the station where there's light already, no cost. So the risk is that after five years of having those things there, there will be nobody there that will ever have an electric vehicle and nobody, so, so that is, so we're talking five years. Mm -hmm. So after five years, hopefully there will be somebody there that parks for at least four hours. You would think that in five years, showing the growth of the electric vehicle fleet and the amount of push that uh, the, the states and the, everybody's doing, there will be five years from now, somebody that parks in there you know, for four hours every day. And uh, obviously they go for more than five, before that four, they get eight, 10, 12, these, the numbers go, back, go up tremendously. You know? But four hours a day will 
take us to almost the cut even uh, number five years from now. Because from here to five years, it's free, no charge. Everything is part of the grant. When, when did we have to have this? Is tonight the night we have to make the decision on this, or is uh, no? Uh, we, when's the drop dead date on the grant application? And you, what's more of a budget? I believe it's uh, uh, April 13 or something like that. But it's going to be a revolving grant <coughs> until the 2.7 million are spent. Right. So it's not that like we have to make a decision right now. We can we can wait. I'm not saying that we should, but you know, if we are not sure what to do at this point, we can wait. It's not like we need to make a decision right now. So I'm, I'm just a little confused. You said it's no cost for the first five years. That's right. The grant will cover the warranty, will cover the, uh, the communication the software. software. Yeah. Know. Unless we do, what about, and then, unless we do a light. If you do a light. Light's the only cost of course. Yes. And I don't know right. how much it costs to install a light, but I know it's gonna cost 50 cents a night. Right. Because on the average of 100 lights in Bethel, $18,000, mm -hmm. that's basically what we're talking about. We did talk at one point, because I think originally you'd been saying the, the spot closer to here, but there is a light closer to where the bank spots are that's existing, so I don't know if right. that's... Because then you were talking about the bank giving up a couple of spots. Yeah, that's right? actually going to be redesigned. It'd be probably where you're talking at the very, very end. We're talking about doing handicap there. I'm, I'm saying even in a little, where the bank sure. spots... Yeah, you'd have to pick a spot. Does it take four hours? Is that the, the average time that somebody's in one of those spots? Well, uh, four hours is what it gives you. It gives them uh, 80 to 100 mile range. And uh, after summer that, or winter? What's that? Is that summer or winter? Every day. I mean, it's, uh, every, every, I mean, every... I read an article the other day that uh, yeah. the pedestrian batteries we got now are only um, yeah. last 41% of yeah. their total capacity. Yeah, during the winter. The old, the old cars, they're not good in the winter, but the new ones, they don't take care of you. Is GW uh, up to put one of these in? We're talking about it. Good. We are, we're because in the same like boat see, that we are. I'd like to see that there first to see how it works for them, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And maybe the school. Yeah, the school is also out there charge for it, just give it free. Well, I'm sure if GW put it in, it would probably be a free, you know, when they probably do it for their employees. Well, you can see how many people use it. Well, the school, that's another question I have. The school wouldn't be free, they would have to pay 10% max. Unless you guys allow us to take the money we have in your, in your bank account to buy the school. Right. I don't know if that's a lot. Theresa will have to answer that question. Because of the money that we got for grant, but we got it for you guys, for the town of Bethel, you know? So could we use that money for this? Otherwise, they would have to pay. I already approached them, and they don't want to put a penny more on that budget, because they got a lot of heat, uh, you know, from South Rutland especially, because the South Rutland taxes went up, so. <coughs> they have their hands full. They don't want to spend anything right now. They want to wait for next, uh, when the budget is over, and, you know, but. Uh, they're, they're positive to the idea, but they would have to pay. Well, you guys not because the work we've done so far, but uh, they would have to match the 2.2K, you know, whatever. But well, I mean, I know they're, you know, we, we talk about cost quite a bit, you know, and I know, you know, there are some of us that are pretty sensitive to cost, as well as, you know, the Energy Committee was put together in order to explore, you know, these alternates for the town, if that's you know, electric charging stations or solar or you know other methods um, in around town, so we really have to, you know, that needs to weigh, you know, maybe a little heavier than the cost of it, um, but shouldn't be the only portion of our decision too. So um, I think we do owe it to Jose to make a decision as a board on, you know, moving forward with the project or not. Um, you know, you know. Again, this you know, the energy committee was formed to do exactly what Jose has brought to us, which is you know, this is one of these many steps that the energy <coughs> committee is looking at doing. Um, you know, it is you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, a twenty-two hundred dollar investment up front for five years. You know, I mean, we've seen this town you know lose a lot more money in a blink of an eye. <laughs> Um, but this at least would go towards a you know worthy cause to start with, 
Um, it does give us five years worth of time to see how it's going. And I'm sure at the end of five years, if it, it wasn't being used, it wasn't being active, we could probably decommission it, right? So we could think about that. I mean, it, I mean all along we've been talking about it as a committee and we've, or, or, you know, as a select board, and we have put aside the money to do the upfront stuff. We would just have to be uh, understanding that after five years, then the, then there would be costs occurring back to the town if, if we chose to keep it. Um, well, that's the thing, if you choose not to keep it after five years. Well, you probably have some sort of cost to remove it, but some, some dismantling cost. You might have some some way of selling the unit or, you know, or something. I'm sure there's a way to do it. But. So what are the chances that the grant doesn't come through? Or we don't get what we're looking for. Unless, unless no guarantees with the grant. Right? Unless we put it in a place where you know th there is no way that those are being used, like not a destination spot, like some crazy place, or you know, the chances of that grant not coming through are, are very minimal. You know, if, it, if we put it in a place where there will be, there is a potential of use that there's people that go there and basically it's going to promote the use of electric vehicles, uh, the grant will come through almost as about 99 percent. Okay. So can we put together a plan to present and get, get it nailed down where we want to have it? You know, we, we've talked about having them here, we've talked about one at the White Church maybe, you know, come up with a plan that kind of nails it down. Okay. Um, Yep. And we can you know, have a little something to be able to take a look at and can tell us whether or not you know, it's, it's going to meet the criteria. Two or three places? Two or three scenarios? Well, no, just, you know, let's settle on what we think if one downtown is the, you know, can, we know that that's going to be utilized, or two there, or one at the White Church, and one here. And just kind of settle on to something and, and put a plan together based on that. And yep. If these go in two different locations, is there add cost to it, or would, it, uh, or is this assumed yeah. putting them both it's in the same location? Sites, so we would have to have two different grants. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I think the way this is set up right now, that the units would stay together. Okay. So yeah, if they well, go to the white church, right. and they would go to the white church. Yeah, right? each unit's double sided. Yeah. So I think that's what we talked about. Just one unit, though, right? Or you need two. Two. Each you have four. Two ports. But in other words, four parking spaces. Uh, two parking. Spaces. Yeah, one unit, double side. No, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So it's just okay. one. Yeah. So it's got to go. It's got to go in one location. Right. Yeah. Got to go in one location. Right. We have to occupy two spaces. <clears throat> All right. But I mean, I think at this point, it, you know, if we ended up putting it here versus the white church or vice versa, I mean, I don't think mm -hmm. that's going to matter on the grant end of things. I mean, I think. No, but just I think what they're going to do is they're going to look at the map of Vermont when they're dig dealing out their money and say, well, there's a large concentration of charging stations in this area, but there's not so many here, so maybe these people get a little first dibs on it, you know, type deal. Mm -hmm. But the way, I, the way I've been, um, I've heard that it's, it's pretty much like care of money funding and stuff like that. First come, first serve, you're mm -hmm. almost guaranteed to get the money. Yeah. Um, But the town has to commit to their part before the grant process. Can they, be yeah, just like a lot of grants that we write, they want the yeah, town to want somebody be committed right. that when they get it. Of course, on the other end, if we don't get a grant, we don't do the charging station. You know, so it kind of goes hand in hand. The fact that there's no charging station at all puts us in a privileged situation. Unlike uh, Montpelier or South Royalton, they already have one, so we are still. Us and Randolph, I think there's none, so, you know, we would be uh, obviously uh, privileged or, 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 you know, they'll put us on the front. I don't know how to say it. Maybe, so. What's the right word? I mean, I think, you know, I've, I've been a proponent for it, you know, mainly just because it's one of the duties that we have asked the Energy Committee to do for us, so. Um, I think the only thing that just kind of took a little wind out of my sails is when I heard that the state's getting ready to put in 22 of them up on the interstate. So I'm like, well, yeah. you know, that kind of hurts a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, 
but um, you know, at the same time, like, you know, the grant money's there. You yeah. know, we've already put the money aside to do it. I don't think that having them out there would necessarily stop somebody from coming in the bathroom. No, I don't think so. They're not going to sit there for four hours. Just creates that many more dots on the screen, you know. <laughs> well, we're already seeing an uptick on a you know on a day by day basis during the weekdays at the parking lot. You know, it's not every single day, but it's more full than it's been over the past year or two. And I think that that's that's kind of what we're doing. It's you know we're we're leveling up what Bethel's providing, and this is one more element in mm -hmm. that, and and it becomes enticing to people whether it's you know their decision to buy a vehicle or not, or their decision. I mean, you were, you were saying you didn't really know about people in Bethel. I know a few electric vehicle owners in Bethel, and all of them work from home, and they charge at home, but if they had a space that they could come to, and, you know, the Arnold Block is a space you can come and work remotely and charge your vehicle, right? I mean, there, there's sort of that hand-in-hand. -hand. Mm -hmm. You have to provide both elements right now. If, why would I leave home if I'm also charging my vehicle? If, mm -hmm. I, you know, if I can do that in time as yeah. well. Uh, you would be a... Uh, a way to generate income as well for the town of Bethel. If, if, there is a, if these things take off, you know, there's a, you know, we, we would pay the light bill. Optimistic, of course, and you don't want to be optimistic when you make a plan, but uh, you know, if these things are used by, uh, you know, say, eight, 16 hours a week, we'll come up with maybe 13,000 or so, you know, and uh, that's almost as much as a month. So. The electric charge the station would pay for the lights, so it will be almost free. And, uh, and uh, the explosion, uh, if the electric vehicle uh, you know, population keeps increasing the way it is, it's, it might be possible that we, we might have 16 hours of charging time somewhere in, in Delta. You know? so. so do we have any of the board members that need more time or information to make a decision, or are we prepared to make a decision this evening? Dave, well, I'd, I'd just like to see you know a plan of where where is it going to be, what two spaces, you know something a little more definitive. But but I no, I think it's uh, so other than the exact up. location, you're yeah. you're good and moving yeah. forward to yeah. a road. Yeah. 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 No, because the exact location isn't going to mean anything for the green end. Like, well, yeah, you got to have it, but yeah. basically. Nice. I mean, if we you know we had, if we're going to try to. Um, Get a couple of spots from Mascoma. You know, we need to make sure that it's going to be okay with them, and yeah. you know, have something. Yeah, we have to do that. Would we? Um, would you come back to us again? Assuming we give the go ahead, would you be coming back to us again before submitting the grant? Absolutely. Okay. So, so that would be an opportunity to see the, uh, yeah, the grant will come to us. Yeah, you're okay. going to go through. Yeah. And that would be when we. Grant. Grant. We would like. I think you'd like to see it before that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe a. a before the grant gets submitted, come in with your, your plans. Okay. And you're going to have to settle all of them right. 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 before the grant. Yeah. And I think it would be good if somehow we can incorporate it with our existing lighting and not have to yeah. install any new lighting. You know, either put yeah. it, you know, if we do end up doing something over by the white church, yeah. you know, somewhere where, you know, there are some lights there now, it could be incorporated with or out in this parking lot, yeah. you have to be. In, in around one of those lights, but I think the power. Didn't you say that the power is closer at the white church too? Easier to get get to it because this is all pavement out here. Yeah. So and uh, one last thing about the, I'm not trying to push the problem, I think, but this uh, are have their own lights. The the more the ones that uh, Greg put you put around, they have their own lights. So they, you can put them anywhere. And they're like they, they they meet the grant requirements. So, one well, question, which type would you like me to move on? The uh, run of the mill, off the grid, or these guys, which are more technologically advanced, et cetera, et cetera? Oh, so you want to see a platform boat? This guy is $85,000, right? 70 something, yes. Yeah, it says. Yeah, 70. 85K for a level two. Yeah, $74,943. Yeah, but uh, the grant will cover 90% of it. We would only have to come up with 7,000, which we are in the budget. We have in the budget, you know. So. I mean, I would say that we would want to just stick with the unit we've been talking about. Yeah. And taking advantage of um, 
low light, hanging fruit? Yeah, lo mm -hmm. yeah, lighting that we have. Okay. Um, okay. For now, I mean, not having been in that. So you guys are open to this concept, but not right now. That's what I'm hearing. Right? You'll be open the to this design. concept later on in the future, maybe? Oh, yeah, down the road. Yeah. And maybe as an option for the places where there aren't lights. So yeah. Are okay. Accessible. But we'll stick with the low hanging fruit, off the grid. So do we take a vote on it? So. Well, I make a motion that we go ahead and have Jose proceed with putting a plan together that you can bring back to us. Yeah, it's basically location. Yeah, location. Any other details? Of, you, know, you know, additional work that, that would need to be done for putting the power on and things like that. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so good to go, get your grant started and just bring us back to the footprint of where where the final okay. station would go. Okay. I'll talk with Greg as far as the time where I'll be with the agenda. Mm -hmm. Put me the agenda. Uh, uh, maybe next meeting or uh, give me a month or so. Yeah. Right. This board we'll together. All right? Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Rose. I think uh, so. First on reports, motions, and ordinances, uh, we uh, we have the water disconnection <coughs> slash debate last bill. <coughs> I believe that that there was a discussion about that at the last yeah, meeting. Right. right. So th this was a discussion at our last meeting where we had somebody who had a. A home trailer, whatever that has been vacant and it's probably not inhabitable, and they're asking to be disconnected from the system. Um, and during discussion at the last meeting, I was asked to do some research on our ordinances to find out, you know, what that looked like, how that was going to work, how it could work. And, um, the reason why I brought this back tonight, I, I, I just want to kind of fill everybody in on what I found in our ordinance. It, first of all, there is no stipulation in there that you have to be connected to the water system. Within 300 feet, 400 feet, whatever. That's not in there. Um, and the two terms that we've kind of been throwing here uh, are are used as basically the same thing in our ordinances. Uh, one being discontinued and one being disconnection. Mm -hmm. So that that was kind of I think our, our talk last time was, you know, what is disconnected? What, you know, what does that actually mean? What, is, what defines that? And Mo I think had brought up the idea that. Disconnected and discontinued was basically the same thing. If you're shut off at the curb stop, you're disconnected from the system. Um, there is no language at all in our ordinance about what. Um, well, there's no, there's nothing that verifies what discontinued or disconnected actually is. So one of the reasons I brought this back is I, I need the water commissioners, you all, to. Uh, well, we need to talk about how we're going to solve this issue. Uh, I don't see anywhere in, in our ordinance anywhere that allows um, allows for a disconnection, taking somebody off the system. Uh, other other than it says that you all can, if there's a if there's harm, potential harm to the system as a whole, somebody's got a cross connection or whatever, we can do that. We can physically disconnect them from the system, um, or well, we can disconnect them from the system. Again, the terms are used kind of as, as the same thing. There, there is no uh, definitive steadfast rule as to what it is connected. So what we need to discuss is, do we want to move forward on, on some language in this ordinance that talks about a actual physical abandonment or disconnection, whatever we want to call it, that would allow uh, the town or somebody to physically disconnect from our system? Uh, as of right now, I don't see anything in it. But now, as water commissioners, it does give you some leverage and, and some freedom to do sort of what you want in the best interest of the system as a whole. So if you felt that disconnecting this physically was in the best interest of the system, we could do that. But I will tell you from, uh, from my perspective, it's, it's never a good idea to take somebody off the system. We need users. We, we want those EUs so that we can you know, grow our system the best that we can. So, um, that's kind of the reason I brought this back. Uh, this 
may be a weird circumstance. I know we had a, a house that got hit down there on South Main. They, that place is not a habitable, and so we, we shut them off. They're, they've been shut off from the system. They're disconnected inside the house, but they weren't disconnected at, at the road, which would be kind of on our side. So you've got from the main to the curb stop, which is us, and then the curb stop in is the homeowners. So they, they are disconnected from the curb stop in, but not in between there, which is what a real disconnect is. There's no physical disconnect. There's no real physical. Well, there is in the basement of the house, but right. there's no physical on our side of the, the curb stop. But we abated their we did. We did. Yeah, they're basically off the system they're from a uh, financial standpoint. There's, there's no charges at all. So what's the difference between that and the one on Cherry Hill then? If there's no, if the house is uninhabitable, there's this, the one down here is condemned. You know, it's right. Kind of, the other right. on it, the other one is not. It's just abandoned, basically. I don't see a difference. If we can, if you can prove that the house is, is uninhabitable, because we know this one is. I mean, it's been, it's been yeah. well, we they're know that. saying it's uninhabitable, they're just saying it's vacant. Right. right. But again, best, I mean, to me, best business practice is to not take your potential customers off your system. Mm -hmm. you, you want to leave them on there. Um, now, so, so are they on a vacancy? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they vacancy rate? Yeah. That's the bill currently for vacancy. Yeah, what, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, yeah. Now, these so, people aren't asking for, are they asking for abatement? Like they don't want to pay water rates anymore? Right. They want to be, they want to be disconnected yeah, from the system. Anything anymore. So we no longer even have the availability of water. We're not going to pay any, that's, that's what I understand from this letter. And they want their last quarter bill paid. Right. Which it's, was, which was based on the vacancy rate. Right. Uh, when we got somebody once, I guess we got to follow suit, right? I mean, the well, the one up here is uninhabitable yeah. versus just vacant. Right. The one on South Main Street. So we, we did move forward with with disconnecting it from the system, basically because the building has been condemned on structural issues, uh, and the owners are not going to move forward with you know redoing and rebuilding that facility. Um, but the abatement on that was a little different where we didn't abate their whole bill. It was just a partial from the, when it happened. From the period of right. the emergency right. on. This one here. As far as we know. This one here, we went in and shut the water off, but they're on vacancy right now. So there was no. Which follows our current policy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. There was no real emergency event that triggered us to, you know, want, want to credit money well, back. Well, why did we shut off the water? Shut off the holder to that trailer. I might get, I don't know. My guess is that they requested it. That there wasn't anybody living there. So Nobody there, so they went on vacancy. So they can go on the vacancy rate. Uh, yeah. They said somewhere in here that they had, they had disconnected it in the fall. In 2012. 2012. 2012, it says there's been no water since Harold's passing in 2012. Well, the house has been vacant since 2012, but we shut the water off in 2017. Correct. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah. they haven't come forward saying the house was uninhabitable, right? No. Okay, so as far as we're concerned, or, or as far as I'm concerned, they, they got to pay the minimum yeah. yeah. until they can prove the house yeah. isn't livable or move, or move the trailer or whatever it is. And I also, we brought this up last week, because I'm, I'm sort of at the same mindset that you were saying, Greg, of we don't, we don't necessarily want to lose users, but we brought up last week, if they really want to be fully physically disconnected from the system, then they need to incur that cost mm -hmm. to do so, that it should not be on the town to incur right. that cost. So Which is something we need to clarify in their orders because there's nothing in there right now. Oh, so that, that's basically what you're asking of yeah. us is to either put that language in or. But what's maybe different with this landowner? Sure. This sure. current landowner has has the option and the ability to have a new tenant there, mm -hmm. where the one that we did take off the service didn't have the option because the building is right. It's basically vacant, like they, you know, condemned. Same they, you right. know, vacant. Right. I think that's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So this one has a potential to have somebody right. there, but they, they don't. Right. Um, so that so it fits. Looking at it, in Todd and Greg, it seems like that fits more of the vacancy rate, which they're on currently. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. I guess the other side of that coin is that they came in and they moved that trailer off of there, and that was now a vacant lot. 
that would be a different argument. Would that possibly classify her mm -hmm. as, as a reason to disconnect that? We need to clean yeah, up some of that. But if they want to sell the property, it's a lot worth more with the water available. Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. I mean, the, so section three of that, that page that you copied for us. Yeah. The owner of any property served by the public water supply is responsible for payment of all fees, fees, rates, charges of water service rendered to the property, not to the structure. Right, not to the house or the trailer or whatever, rendered to the property. And well, you're right. That's once connected to the water system, the owner is obligated to pay at least the fixed cost of such service. I mean, so, so, so in a lot of ways, that language <laughs> is in there to say if they wanted to be fully removed, complete, uh -huh. disconnect from the system, that availability of water is not cannot be there. Right, right now, the water is available. Right. You just have to pay for it or not. But, but they would need to pay to do the full removal of connect, any connection from the system, which is really different. I mean, I, I, I think in some ways the language is in here to say that we're providing water to the property. You're obligated to pay that. And that's exactly what we base our agency rate on, is that, that paragraph right there. Yeah. But there needs to be that next step, possibly, of what if we do if somebody wants to completely abandon it. I call it abandon. That's what we call it in other places, abandon it. Well, I think the physical disconnect, you're taking that water off of that. They'd have to pay from, to disconnect it from the main. They'd have to take out the pipe going to their shutoff. They'd have to go back straight to the main at their cost. But the tricky part about that, though, is that whenever somebody comes in and they want a water service put in, we, the town, pay from, from the main to the curb stop. Mm -hmm. And then it gets picked up from there on out. That's where it's a little tricky. I mean, I think at this point with that, the property in question is, if they wanted to get to a complete shutoff, then they would have to probably move forward on their end to dissolve the structure and the assets of the structure completely, you know, and to show that there, nothing is going there to be and disconnected. And water line to the shutoff. Right. Well, I mean, if you're interpreting the code the way that I think we are, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's their problem. But I would hate to do that. I would hate to make something show up water over, too. I mean, it's quite a long time. And anyone, so we just don't want to lose water users. No. And it, it reduces the value of the property, like you said. There's a lot of things we, we just, I would rather not do. No, I, think. I don't know if maybe the idea is to put in some language and maybe clarify what what the conditions have to be or what the terms are in order for somebody to disconnect or whatever, not pay at all. If that means that it's a vacant lot and if it's got a structure, it's an uninhabitable structure. I don't know if that's maybe a way to go with this. Well, it may be using the language you were saying, of abandonment, abandonment versus vacancy right. and disconnect, yeah. because that, I think that's where it gets right. confusing. Um, and, but an abandonment is a physical disconnection. Are you can. I'm just going to define disconnect and discontinue. Yeah, because they're using all over the place in there. There's one paragraph where they use it the same, they use both of them in the same context. We should probably work on an amendment towards a definition of the two, yeah. two words. Yeah, we need to clean up this entire ordinance, mm -hmm. honestly. The whole water well, in the meantime, I, you know, I, I guess I would move forward with saying that the, the water would stay connected and, and, and the vacancy rate be applied. So, um, the second part to that is I'd like to have some sort of a, uh, an approval from you to go forward with a policy in the interim while we're doing the ordinance, a policy that talks about um, what the qualifications are to be, what's the word we should use? No longer paying any fees at all. Right. What what Bank that should, all service. Yes, what that looks like. So that I've got if this happens again, at least I've got some criteria there. Well, I mean I think, you know, like Lindley and Mo over over there have been talking about there there needs to be some sort of physical separation by the by the homeowner, right? And to be paid for by the homeowner, I think is what we'd be looking for some language in there. But the South Main Street, I mean there is a physical right. disconnect on their side. Uh -huh but it's not on our side. And usually you want it on our side because that controls. Right. Right. I mean, I, I guess I see because there was an emergency situation. Right. Maybe it's adding language in, you know, amendments could be made in the case of emergencies because they're, they're a case where they're looking to sell that property. If somebody tears down that structure and builds something new, the water's there. And they're gonna reconnect to exactly. the system and they'll be going again. And there's a reconnection fee already in the code. <laughs> right. A reconnection fee. 
twenty-five dollars probably. Right. That's exactly. <laughs> what it is. That's that magic we might want right to look at that yeah. too. Yeah. It's the same situation with yeah. cherry green. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. could take that out and put in another one. Right. right. So, so I, I'll come back with a. If you're okay with this, come back with some mm -hmm. sort of policy that talks about kind of what the criteria. Definitely is. clean that up. The house is uninhabitable. Um, there's yeah. been an emergency in it. You know, there's damage to the structure. Whatever. Right. Uh, I'll bring something back to you that we could at least get. And, policy kind of in place. And definitely define a couple of those terms. Yeah. Um, well, that'll be the whole work that's changed. Right. Okay. Define the terms and I think also figure out figure out the um, the responsibility of, of the disconnect. You know, who is responsible for the disconnect. Yeah. yeah. And we and while we're Why at it and while we're at it we might want to make the addendum to to the um, reconnection. You know, I mean for some reason, everything in this town was twenty-five dollars. So well, yeah, that's, even... that's what we always chuckle here: twenty-five dollars, because it was the magic number, I guess, for a while. Now, if it costs our, if it costs costs our employees out there four hundred dollars to make the connection, then maybe it ought to be four hundred dollars. You know, maybe we can, yeah. maybe you know, you can talk and, and figure out from the well, from, from the guys know. how long would this take and well, what would that cost? Just the parts themselves. Is it, is it a, a case court. by case basis, depending on? Well, a court stop and a curb stop are eighty-five to one hundred dollars a piece. They're lead free, so they're probably one hundred twenty bucks a piece now. So there's two hundred fifty bucks right there. Plus you've got we use plastic line instead of tight K copper, so it's not too bad. But it's hundred, you know, everybody might want to get their twenty-five dollars in now before it changes. Yeah, right. It's a, you know, the line itself is only about a buck a length of foot, so that's yeah. not very much. But we might want to just figure out what that cost is and yeah, make sure we're to reconnect. Them. What was it? So. Um, Conditions on what allows for disconnect, yeah. cost to reconnect, increase possibly. What else? The, the definitions the for full abandonment versus disconnect. Right. Discontinue. Dis yeah, discontinue. Yeah. I think discon in my little brain, discontinue and disconnect are two completely different things. That was not to me. Mm -hmm. Discontinue, you shut the valve off. Disconnect, right. the valve goes away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So that's to find the term. But right here it says, before a service is discontinued for delinquency of payment, the municipality may follow the procedure, blah, blah, blah. As required by law, any request for payment and or disconnection shall be mailed at least 14 days. So it's, it's all kind of, it's been used in, in both ways, I think, a little bit. So it's used in this, in our ordinance, it's actually used, disconnect is used as shutting the curb stop off, not stopping the water flow to the service at all, which is, I think, what we, what we need to look at. Do we, we need an amendment on this abatement? I mean, do we need a motion on this abatement? I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I move that we vote whether to uh, abate or not this property on the 111 Cherry Lane. So the property is currently being built on a uh, vacancy rate. So you can make the motion to keep it as is. Yeah, continue the right. vacancy rate. Continue on the vacancy rate and right. not to abate the, the water. Right. Whether or not we want to abate it. Some of us might want it. Right, yeah. So, 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 yeah, so here, so I'll, um, so I'll entertain a motion to, um, to not abate the water on on uh, Cherry, 111 Cherry Lane, and to keep it on vacancy rate. So, yeah. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Second. 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 Okay. Good there. Yep. Okay. Denying the request. All right. We have fee schedules. Yep. Uh, so, Dietrich, yeah, Dietrich's here if you have any other questions, but what, what we, uh, as she and I were looking through this, and Dietrich's been working diligently uh, on getting some of the, the programming for the pool and classes set up, all sorts of things. She's been coming in a little bit on the side here and, and doing some work, and during that, we found out that uh, after we finished our fee schedule that we had missed the uh, group fee. So we defined a, uh, a family, I believe we called it, right? A family pass. Uh, what is it defined as? It's six people, Which two parents, and four children, right? Right, and that's a daily, that's a 
per day purchase pass right. price. So what we were missing from this was large groups. So, uh, for instance, I think the school. Summer camp. Summer camps, the grade school. They come in and they want to have a large group of kids. Well, they were being charged all over the place. Or we not at all. Huh? Or not or at not all. Or not at all. You know, there was absolutely no rhyme or reason as to how they were being charged. So uh, we looked at it and looked at how much we thought it was going was to cost um, to have certain size groups, kind of what the thresholds look like for different staffing sets. And uh, I think we came up with four dollars. The proposed is four dollars per head. Three dollars. Three dollars per head. Sorry. Yeah. And this was groups with seven or more people. So uh, in most instances, I think the three dollars per head will will pay for forty percent or so of what it costs us to, to have those people. Uh, larger and larger groups where that threshold is not quite where it should be because it's every so many kids you have to have another. So if you're kind of in the bottom end of that, you're making money. If you're at the top end of that with your kids, you're, you're getting more life goals. So um, I think we ended up saying that we thought on average this is going to be like 25% of the cost, right? Mm -hmm. We looked at, at these large, because we had average this year of 70 kids. I mean, what, 50 or 70 kids per group? Uh, no, last summer our largest groups were like 40 kids. Well, Bethel Elementary came and they were 100 and some kids. Right. That was just for one day. But the, the weekly groups that would come at when the season was open. I think the largest group we ever had was like 40 some okay. kids. So I think what we time. did is we took the average of how many, we, how many kids in a group and how much staff we needed and overhead we had and figured out how much $3 was to that. And it was, I think it was 25% yep, or did. lower. So we're not making a lot of money. We're not making any money on this. So uh, this also, and you can speak to this better than I can because you did some of the research, but as far as the other communities around here, I think we're, we're on par with them. You want to tell them what you found there? Yes, I looked into, because we didn't have a baseline. There's no, there's no history of, um, nor did we have any record of any set rates in the past. Um, and some groups were being charged $10 per head for as many times as they wanted to come, just $10. Mm -hmm. Some groups weren't being charged any even though the cost was still, you know, we still had to have staff and chlorine and all of that. And so I looked at several pools in Vermont, um, what Randolph charged, what Waterbury charged, what some of the bigger pools up in the Burlington, Williston area charge. And, um, you know, four to five dollars was the going rate for a lot of uh, groups per head. But because we have never been consistent in a large group rate or had a large group rate really um greg and i decided let's play it safe and start at three dollars because some groups are going to say wait a minute you know you, you've never charged us this before well and they haven't you know um but some of the groups that i've already talked to um that have used our pool consistently for the last several summers i just said hey giving a heads up they're you know we're talking about a group rate this year uh, what that is, I don't know yet, but, and, and they all understood. They, um, uh, Clara Martin Center, EVA, um, One Planet, they all said, that's okay. You know, we understand that you have costs. So, so $3 is kind of where we decided to start with the understanding that that doesn't even begin to cover the cost of bringing these groups in. But, you know, the pool's never going to make us any money whatsoever. So it's just kind of offsetting what it's going to cost to have guards. The American Red Cross says we have to have one guard for every 10 children actively in or around the water. So um, I'm very, very, very strict with that. I just, I think it's the more so eyes we have, guards. the better. Then you have to have at least one relief, right? Yes, you, you have really to have five guards. Right. And then I also like to be there because when you have a big group, I, I want to be there overseeing and support for the lifeguards. So that's five, six people that you need to have on staff. So that's what we're asking for is uh, just this amendment to the fee schedule. This is the only thing that's changed on here is the addition of that, that group rate. So, not so far. So far, I'm not done yet. I got to get the brochure to print, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's still coming. It's still coming. I have a note. I know exactly what you're talking about. 
So I'll uh, entertain a motion to amend the fee structure as laid out. So we'll move. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you. As long as Greg is going to keep going on my right? fee. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Next we have the Homeland Security Grant. Thank you for all your work on this, Steve. You're welcome. Uh, I love doing it. He's that. already got the whole Friday night thing. All the, everybody, everybody's set, right? Uh, I just need a second half of one evening, but we've got Dart Helicopter coming one night. Yeah, we've, got, the baseball field. Oh, cool. we've got Vince coming with Raptors one night. We've got, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you all. You will have to come and, <laughs> come and yeah, see for yourself. Friday night to bring that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so the next thing here is, the, is a grant. Um, Therese and, and the chief have been working on this, uh, this grant to get some. It's like swift water rescue equipment. Uh, it's, there's basically it's a free grant. There's, there's no match to this. We just need to have board approval in order to move forward on this application. So, move to approve the grant application. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And select board meeting minutes from the 28th. Yes, we had a. I have two. I get two, but I wasn't here, so I don't know what to refer it to. So. Is the scanner having issues? No, not at all. We we had a scanning issue. Is it so double sided? Was, some yes. of it got double sided. Double I know some of the tabs double sided, stuff, and she yeah, like missing. I realized I was missing the back half of all exactly. the tabs ones. So yeah. That's why we brought those. I didn't realize that. <laughs> that's the full. And then it's, um, if you're not comfortable approving them right now. Anybody want to look at the minutes from last time? No, I wasn't yeah. here, so. I got, a, I got four here. Yeah, it's just that whoever's getting electronically, it's what you see. Which two pages do you guys have? The second side. Yeah, the second and the four. The odd pages. <laughs> yeah. The even ones in the print. Could we, could we come back to them so I have a second to read it? Sure. We'll go to Sure. We'll go to the town manager's report. How's that? Uh, no, I think she's going to do it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 So uh, my report is in your packet. Just a couple little quick things here. Um, so the municipal roads general permit, uh, that's new. The state came up with this idea uh, that we all had to pay for a uh, municipal stormwater permit, which is fine. You know, it's a fee, whatever. But what comes with it is we're required to do a full-blown erosion inventory. And we did one of these a couple years ago, but it won't work because it had to be, it has to be on their format. So I'm gonna have to do an erosion inventory come spring. Uh, I started working on it a little bit. I'm actually trying to kind of take what that person two years ago did and use some of that information. Um, but on every hydrologically connected road, which I'm not even sure how many of those there are, um, every section, every segment they call it. The segment is roughly 360 feet or something like that. So there's a ton of them. There's a, huge, there's a two or three page um, report that I have to do for all these. Within, so, within a book or, or, or a stream? Well, there's a map that is available. Two Rivers has a map. The state actually has it. I gave it Two Rivers. But there's a map that shows all the segments that are hydrologically connected. Basically what we had to report two years ago. Pretty close. Yeah. So I'm referencing that and I'm going to the report we had done and hoping that most of the information is still valid. I'll have to validate it all because I'm using stuff that's two, three years old. Um, but it's just going to take me, it's just going to be a lot of work. So if you hear me complaining about it, that's what it is. And it's, it's due by, I want to say it's due by September 2020. So I've got some time to do it, but it's going to take, it takes some time. It's an effort. So uh, I just started working on that. So if anybody asks or if you, if you hear anything about the, the municipal roads general permit, you can, you can cuss at it because it's something else. Um, Tim had a, his, I assume it's annual. I think it's an annual inspection from the state, and he got an excellent rating on his plant. As a matter of fact, they, they told him that it was basically his plant is the example that they try to give everybody as to how he 
keeps his plan, the cleanliness of the plan, how it's all in order, and he's got all the records in order. So he, he got an excellent rating on that, which is yeah. fantastic. Fantastic. You were saying that's like the first one you've gotten in 26 years. Really? Really? So really? Oh, they were completely impressed. Did they, they give any like, type uh, of like plaque or award or anything no. like that towards it? Or? Not that I've seen. No. Maybe something to get out into the public eye. Yeah. If possible, you know, on the Facebook page with a picture of him, sure. maybe sure. at, at yeah. the plant or something. Yeah. Get it yeah. out there, you know. We definitely hear a lot of yeah. negative things about water and stuff in the town, so sure. we'll that's some positive things. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, so kudos to him for, for doing a great job at that sewer plant. Yeah. Uh, plowing is going as, as it's going. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had some equipment breakdown like we always have, and we deal with it. It is what it is. Uh, we have the one ton back. It was just at the garage. We have the one ton back. So hopefully we'll get through one more storm and then we'll go back to the garage. It'll be gone. It'll be gone again <laughs> for a couple of days. Um, the plan, Alice, of the plan is to, to get through this storm and then get the grader back out and start winging back some of these, these ditches, get the snow back off the road because it's, it's an issue. Um, he's aware that it's an issue. Um, but they're doing the best they can. I, I think they're doing, you know, I've, I've heard a lot fewer complaints from people this year, I think. The new person's really working out well, having that, that extra person there. Um, and we're going to do, we're doing some experimenting with how to reduce salt by using other materials and things like that. So we're, we're working on some stuff that we're hoping to, to come with you with, with some, some changes that might benefit us um, financially and, and otherwise. So um, the build new property, we, we're moving forward on that. So. Um, Mary is working right now, trying. She's she's doing some, uh, trying to collect some, some money for people. She's going out and, and trying to do like coin drops and things like that. Not a coin drop, but uh, but she's you know she's talking. She's got quite a few people. She thinks that that might be willing to contribute to the this purchase. Um, Steve Libby, we're meeting with him. I'm meeting with him on Thursday, I believe. He's with the River Conservancy, so we'll be meeting with him to kind of look at, at exactly how the grant is going to look because um, they're going to be writing all the grants for this. They're also working on getting the appraisal done. That's the first large step in this, is to appraise that property, and that puts us at, at wherever we're at, and we'll, we'll know what number we're shooting for from there. Um, so I should have more information for you here in the near future um, about how we look on the grant, and, and if we're going to be short, or how short we're going to be, or, or how that's going to work. Um, like I said, Mary is doing some pretty hot, heavy fundraising right now. Uh, I, I think she's going to get quite a few people that are going to be interested in purchasing this property. So, uh, but I will be passing along more information when I know it. Um, if anything else, if any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I just, oh, just, sorry. No. For everybody out there in TV land here, um, we, we have the salt buckets out on Main Street. Um, it's, it's to help with keeping the sidewalks free of ice. We've had people taking advantage of those, um, not only putting a lot of salt on the ground, but we've seen people with bags taking the, the salt home with them. So, you know, everybody has to pay for that. It's, it's, it's not, that's really not what it's meant for. That stuff's expensive. There is a shortage of salt throughout the whole state. So if you can conserve it where you can, we would greatly appreciate that. And I just wanted to piggyback onto the winter maintenance. You know, talking with some of the, the owners in town you know, it seems to be, you know, Lindley, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to be very, very positive on, you know, on the maintenance of the downtown area, both snow, you know, we've had some very large storms that in the past probably would have taken us a week or more to remove snow banks that were gone within 48 hours, maybe in some cases. Um, so that's been very good. Um, one thing I, I do want to point out, and now that the town <clears throat> has, has really, you know, step forward in, in regards to the maintenance of the downtown, especially during winter time. We do need to get a little bit of buy buy in back from some of the owners in town. And the only reason why I say that is the the last few storms that we've had, we've had, you know, large droppings followed by very cold temperatures that create uh, you know, runoff from the buildings onto the sidewalks. And all the buildings, if you go up through except for this building on the corner here, I can't remember who who owns the building here, this first floor in the corner. All the other buildings, the sidewalks stay pretty clear. But but the building here on the end, Lang's yeah. building, the, the last time there was so much ice built up on that sidewalk um, because all the snow runs, you know, all the runoff. So if you get a 
10 degree day that the sun is shining, the snow is melting, it's falling off the roof, and it's instantly freezing when it hits the sidewalk, and there's, you know, mounds of ice. To the point, like, one day I wanted to just, like, put some cones and ribbon it off and say, nobody walk in front of this, because it's, you know, we're out there doing the maintenance, you know, and I'd hate for somebody to get hurt, um, you know, because probably the liability would come back on us, even though it's, you know, an owner's building that. So I don't know what we need to do. I think at this time we really need to go back to some owners and talk about, you know, stormwater runoff of buildings and sure. about collecting that and keeping it off the sidewalks. Yeah, and you've got, you know, typically there's a gutter system on a building, on a building that would run it to, a, to one location and then we figure out from there how to, to get it across the sidewalk. And I don't, I, don't, I think it's probably been part of the issue on those. Yeah. That it's just, it, it's just going like straight down as opposed to being channeled somewhere. Yeah. yeah. The runoff doesn't seem as, to be as great on the other buildings because either the roofs are pitch more towards the river. They and, don't it, to the river. and there's very little, well, not this one here. Not this one. Yeah. The, the, one. the other one's yeah. mostly pitched to the river. And then you just have the small eaves in the front that drip on the sidewalks. <coughs> but this one on the end, yeah. but, you know, half of that pitches on this side and right. it all goes, well, I don't know if you need some sort of stormwater catching system to reroute that water back to the opposite side of the building, but it's very icy. I, mean, I, walk, I watched some people one weekend and I came to you mm -hmm. day, you know, that were trying to walk through and I wanted to like put some cones up there and say, don't walk there. So after we had a talk, I had Morgan, I let him know to, to be a little more diligent about getting that. I'm also told we have Steve here on, who helps us out around town doing some shoveling and salting. So I told him to watch it too, so we got But we could put as much salt and sand on there right. as you want yeah, if it keeps right. melting so off. Right, yeah, it's, we're a little more diligent about it. Yeah, you know, it's but, a little, sometimes easy to catch before it becomes a, a big. But we're doing, a, you know, I just want to point out that the town has stepped up things down downtown, and yeah. I think at this point we need just a little bit of trade back on some select building owners. And I don't know how best we solve that issue if that's sending that one building owner a, a letter, maybe. You know, I don't even know if we have anything that's even enforceable. Right. You know. Right. Um, but I think it's probably being direct about it because I think one of the issues with that property isn't just the snow coming off, it's that after Morgan goes through and does the initial clear, all the other building owners have regular traffic so they make a point to really clear it and that building doesn't have regular traffic so they're not prioritized. And that's a big yeah, connector building, sidewalk, it yeah, connects yeah. right up to Well, your sidewalk is like in front of your place, you get salted, but then you come out you salt it too. So they right. get clear. Well, we're clearing them even after Morgan. Right, so now he gets, he gets what he can, it just doesn't. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so I think maybe just addressing it directly, and if it doesn't get better, then we can have a discussion of adjacent property owners being required to maintain their own sidewalks. Well, I just wanted to throw it out there. I mean, the town yeah, definitely, it. it has been night and day this year versus last year or previous years, and I think now there's yeah, a little bit of a trade off on trying to work through some of these things. See, in the past years, it didn't bother because it was the same way all the way through. Right. right. Well, and also that building was used. Until yeah. fairly recently, they were in and out of there all the time, mm -hmm. bringing spotting them out. Right. But it, it's such a, it's a major connector sidewalk oh, yeah. to go up Church Street, so everybody that walks yeah. mm -hmm. into town walks through. And it's a blind corner, so you don't really even want to be in the road, you kind of need to stay on the sidewalk. So. Yeah. I don't know what we can do there. I, mean, I, would, I would think addressing it initially with the building owner before making it a, a larger mm -hmm. thing with all the business owners, but then if it, if it doesn't resolve that way, Right. I don't know if maybe you can I'll reach out. I think track down the owner and yeah. just I can do that. But everything seems to be really good. Um, you know, usually this time of year, if you just go down to the hardware store, they'll tell you. You know, usually all the customers will tell you how well the downtown's yeah. being taken care of or not, and, and everything's been good. So yeah, I've been only here in yep. and River Street Bridge, which I'm very grateful for, because in years past. You couldn't walk on that sidewalk for weeks after a snowstorm. And I can still walk my dog, so thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, there's one of the guys right there. You can thank one of the guys. <laughs> thank one you. one of our road crew right there. <laughs> You're not here to complain, are you? No. All right. <laughs> Just easier. Just easier. <laughs> uh, any other questions? That's all I had. Sure. I move we accept the minutes of uh, January 28th.
on the constable report, but I'm, I'm, again, I don't know, I'm just getting a little confused again on, some, you know, I know we had talked about like ticket-wise, like if it, if it had a number on it, then that meant you wrote a ticket. Yes. But now I see numbers on it, and then I'll, there's notes next to it saying like special incident. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the ticket didn't apply or, it, you know, so I don't know, I'm just a little confused. Well, I'll work with him. Um, I'm actually working what with that means, the guy who created this, created this software for this. I've actually just went under contract with him. Um, you'll see that eventually mm -hmm. in the next meeting probably. to start doing work orders uh, for my the road crew. And he's putting together, we're the beta subjects for this, this new software that he's got. Uh, called Spider, I think. That kind of, it's the same guy that uses this, that, that produced this and created it. Uh, but we'll be using it for the work software and the idea is to, to see what I can get out of this too. Okay. If we can get more out of this, we can get some more clarification for it. <coughs> I know it's available. I, I know it's in there to done. If we can, the nice thing about using this guy is if it's not there, it's pretty quick about creating something that we can start using. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like you need more clarification. Do you want to know, what, what exactly do you want to know? Do you want, I mean, well, what, what, does what the offense was? What does FTC mean? Uh, so you know, we don't know what the acronyms are. Because I know we talked in the past that if there was a, like, instance, Massachusetts plate number, blah, 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 right. that that meant because you put the license plate number down that that was given a ticket. Right. That was the understanding. Right. And then if it didn't have that, that meant there was another, you know, circumstance in which he didn't. But then I see some this time there was a, a Vermont plate, you know, 45 and a, 25 and then it says special incident and there was, you know, so that means no ticket, you know, or, you know. So do you want to know what the, what the offense is? Well, I thought he said he was kind of limited as to how much well, he could describe. that's what I'm wondering the public is how much he can actually say, but. What special incident I means is somebody, you know, somebody on heading for the hospital with right. somebody bleeding in the back seat. TC. Well, I would just I would just assume at this point that if if it was a special incident, and he didn't have to give a ticket. Then why is he giving the other information? Why is he giving the forty five and the twenty five with the license plate number? Right. Unless he gave him a ticket, you know. Unless special incident is just a, an item that dropped down. Because then down a little ways, there's a Massachusetts plate here with the plate FTC. number, yeah. with FTC with no mileage or, or with no speed up speed. So does that mean that? Yeah, what, what was it? I don't know. I'm just looking at these, that's all. And I only got the same, I got the same exact one twice, so I don't know. You did? <laughs> I got the same one twice, unless it was... It was just one two-sided. Oh, yeah. Oh, one two-sided? Yeah. I've got two oh, I think See, I didn't get anything. Two Nothing two-sided came through. You got through. two two-sided? Yeah, but, but they're both the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Tax sale information. Everybody get there. So everybody get the, the both sides of all this. Yep. Okay. I get half of it, but that's all right. I talked to. I have copies today. today. The rest of it. Yeah, I talked to Teresa. Okay. The thirteen all together, right? Yeah. That, well, there's some had one had redeemed. Right. Two were redeemed. Two redeemed. Two two redeemed. redeemed. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, they still have a year to redeem the other ones. So uh, March 19th uh, at 1 o'clock is when the, the tax sale is going to take place uh -huh. at the town office. Okay. Now, where is this posted? All this stuff? Is it just on um, the website or is it? No, we posted it. Uh, let's see, I think it's in the clerk's office. I think we posted it. Um, it's in our office. It's in the clerk's office. And I think we posted it. I think it's a library. Um, 
Teresa has also sent it to um, real estate agents and yeah, and yeah, different no. identities throughout the area. Yeah, she's got some, like, some people that have asked to potential buyers and Bank, like, and all banks, time, real estate agents. Um, yeah, legally, we posted it where we were supposed to post it, and okay. she contacted many other people yeah. that might be interested. Might have somebody interested. Is it on the, the town the website? I'll have to check. It'd be kind of neat if you could put a link on the website. Yeah, you know. I don't remember if it is. I'll have to look. It's not on our Facebook. We didn't put it on Facebook. We didn't really no, we need to go there. Well, you could link it on the, the home. Yeah, and I'll look page. and see if we have it on our, um, on our website page. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing I think you've got is the this budget. The bud. Yeah. I got delinquent. Yeah, here's, so here's the tax sale. This is the information you go with the tax sale. Yep. This is, uh, so this is the delinquent tax report. And it's it delinquent you which, um, utilities and tax yep. bills. And, there's, and she's written in there who has an agreement, who's going to tax sell. Yep. Yep. I just still can't believe in the past some of these delinquent taxes that, you know, some of these go back five, six years. You no know, you know, paying taxes. taxes. You know. Oh yeah, I know. I know. There's some pretty high figures on utilities too. What's that? There's some pretty high figures on utilities. Yeah. Well, and it's a little bit off because those are up to date too. So those would include the current, some of the currents that are going with. So, you know, we're not really, we're not really at that point now where we're looking at doing a, getting an agreement or anything with them. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's high. But it's actually, it's coming way down. It's come way down. Both taxes and, uh, Utilities have come down quite a bit. I think it's actually in our in the town report. She put a section in there that explains percentage-wise what we're looking at for. Uh, I will tell you that the the uh, the page it had the, the people that the names for delinquent utilities last year it was a page and a half, and this year it's about that much. Good. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Now it's good that we have a handle on it now. It's just. You know, I was looking through this this weekend. And, like, there's one account that's sixty thousand dollars. Fifty-eight thousand seven hundred. You know, delinquent taxes over. Where, where did that? I mean, I watched that seven I years. You know, so that, that just close. just huge. That's, that one blew me away. And this was a large property that was, you know, nine ten thousand dollars a year. Um, I didn't see any ten thousand dollar ones last year. Why we ever let that get that far? All of a sudden, we got ten thousand dollars for. Five, four years. But the rest of it looked pretty Five good. Years. The rest of it looked good. Any well, questions well, in regards to the... Hopefully we get... No, it was great to see that, you know, whether it's a tax sale or an agreement or, you know, to see something you can actually know where the things are now. It's too bad because there are some in there in the tax sale that are there every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, at least the good thing is that she has, you know, a majority of that, you know, there are agreements in place that she's working on now. Um, I mean, it is a pretty large tax sale list for the size of the town that we have. Yeah. But again, it's been years. It's since been. Since we've, yeah. I don't know. When was the last tax sale? Anybody had any idea? Oh, well, it's been four years. Did one maybe when it first started or something back in that? Yeah. Kind of time frame. Like in 14, 13, 14. I was going to say it's probably been about six years since yeah. Yeah, this town seen anything like that. And I don't think there was much that we did. I don't think there was much. Well, there should have been. Yeah. been more, probably. So, other business to come before the board? Anything else? I did, um, on my uh, deputy help. Officer Hat, um, I did um, follow up with the the ongoing complaint that we had, and um, this Saturday, and and went through the went through the check sheet and got that all set. Copies are all set, and they'll be um, both parties will be able to pick them up. I gave them to Greg today, so uh, they'll be able to pick them up this week. That's been taken care of. How was that process? Was it, was it fairly simple? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, just being the first time that I've done one, it took a little bit of time, but, um, you know, it, it's just, again, like I was sharing with the board, it just, you would think there would be, uh, you know, better templates to assess the repair phases of issues. You know, you'd think there would be a template saying if, you know, if it's a electrical need, it, you need to fix it within this period of time, and the state doesn't give you that. It's left up to interpretation by the by the health officer that's doing it. So right. what I may deem 30 days, someone else might deem 90 days. So or, or it's not, yeah, there's not really a, a fair process. There are a few things that if, if you do see certain violations that immediately you have right. to address. But it opens up to negotiation. Yeah, to so it, it's tough because then you want to try to enforce it, you know, with penalties, but, you know, it's, it's not a very easy process. The website doesn't really help you out much either. So. <laughs> So, but, fun process. Anything else? I make a motion to re adjourn. Okay, all in favor? All right. That's a short one tonight.